veteran of fighting uh, these epidemics. Today I have come to address you on the issue of the coronavirus, abbreviated as COVID-19. They call it corona, that must be Latin, because under the microscope, it, look, it looks like a crown. Engure, engure nuninyankore. Ichirunga. This is a new virus that belongs to the family of the common cold, the Seniga, will be under a group of viruses. It makes some people very sick because being a new virus, all of us do not have immunity against it because we had never been exposed to it. Fortunately, after listening carefully to our scientists and after watching commentators in the countries where it is already active, it seems to have two characteristics that will help us to survive it and defeat it. Characteristic number one is that it does not kill many of the people it infects. Out of the approximately 150,000 people that have been infected worldwide, this was yesterday, but today morning the figure had changed. But, but uh, I wrote the speech yesterday, so forgive me. Don't, don't say that Museven is ignorant. Museven is actually very current. I think this morning I heard that it, the figure had reached one, 190,000. But the figure of yesterday was 150,000 people that had been infected worldwide. Only about 5,000 of them had, uh, had died which works at 3%. With Ebola in Uganda, the percentage of the people dying was 67%. So, it seems it doesn't kill as much as Ebola. Secondly, this virus enters the body only through the soft spots, soft parts of the body, the nose, the eyes, and the mouth. The nose, the eyes, and the mouth. It cannot go through an intact skin like some of the diseases used to. Yours, like yours, Evignoro leprosy because in the olden days I used to hear that those diseases could spread by okujwarana by sharing clothes so that means it could enter you through the other parts other than the soft parts if you can get it from the cloth because when I'm in the past had <laughs> all sorts of habits. One of them was sharing clothes. And uh, they used to say, the vignoro, the yours. And even leprosy, I don't know about leprosy, that, that, that you could get it through the clothes of uh, somebody. Which means, if that is the case, then that means it was not going through necessarily, though. I don't know. But the experts here can say more about that. But the good thing with this one, this virus, 
goes through the soft parts. The eyes, the mouth, and the nose. The mucous membranes. This therefore means that even when you get near a person with the virus in his or her body, he or she can only infect you if she sneezes. Now, this sneezing is very difficult for, for us when we use English. Because English is a poor language. Because with Rinyankore, Okwechi Amara is when you blow out. That's Okwechi Amara. Sneezing is actually Okshoreza. Okshoreza when you put in. <laughs> so I don't know, I don't know how they call it in uh, even in Uganda. When you when you pull in, that is okshoreza, and, and that's what we translate as uh, sneezing in Rinyankore. But when you blow out, that is okwetiamura. So we are talking about blowing out. When you blow out, okwetiamura, uh huh. Or coughing or cholera. If this person who is infected sneezes out or coughs out near you so that the tiny and invisible bimira, the, bimira, the, the, the mucus, but the small ones, mucus from the nose. Or spito, spito, some small saliva. Enter your nostrils. Or those infected materials from the body land on a surface, like a table, a chair, a door handle, a hanky, where the virus can stay alive for three hours, and then you touch it, and then you touch your soft parts of the body, the eyes, the mouth, and the nose. That's how it will affect you. Either you are near the one who's, who, who sneezes out, or who coughs out, or what he coughs lands on uh, a, a, a surface where the, 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 the virus can stay alive for three hours. And when you touch there, and you touch yourself on the soft parts, that's how it will go into you. That's why I want you to understand this very, very clearly, so that you, 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 you fight. It is this characteristic of either being blown out by, 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 by sneezing out, because English is poor, doesn't uh, distinguish between sneezing out and sneezing in, which, which the Nyankore does. Because the Nyankore okwetsi amra, you sneeze out. Okshoreza, you, you sneeze in. That's okshoreza. When, when, when I, I take in the, the breath through the nose, uh, but, but English is sneezing, so sneezing how? In or out? I don't know why you like English, but those are that's a different topic. So, if you sneeze out, if a, if a, if an infected person sneezes out or coughs, and you are near, and that watery breath gets into your. Uh, nostrils or your eyes, that's how you, you, you will get infected. Or what is sneezed out falls on the surface, like a table where you touch, and then you touch yourself in the soft parts. That's how it will go into you. The cabinet, under my chairmanship on Monday the 16th of March, 2020, 
sat and decided as follows. Although the kill ratio of the virus is not very high compared to, for instance, Ebola, this is only if the victims are in perfect health. You must understand that Ugandans. The virus will kill only 3% out of the 100% infected if the 100% are healthy, in perfect health. With the healthy young people, for instance, some information says that an infected person may not even know that he or she has any problem. They say that it can go through a healthy young person without even knowing that, without him or even the people around him knowing that, 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 that he was attacked. She, she may defeat the virus without even knowing that it ever attacked him or her. The real danger society, however, is for the old people, 70 years and above, and people with other diseases that they have been surviving with. Such diseases are like TB, tuberculosis, HIV, diabetes, Hypertension, I think even cancer, even cancer. It is these that will be very sick or even die. Since we have a very large number of people living with HIV, 1.4 million, having diabetes, 800,000 having hypertension, 4.8 million, TB, 100,000 per year. I did not get the figure for cancers. We must do everything possible to ensure that this enemy does not come here, does not find plenty of dry grass piled up and ready for ignition. What is the dry grass that can help to start and sustain fire of a coronavirus epidemic? It is the big masses of people gathered together and in close proximity. What are these masses of people that are gathered in groups that can easily aid the spread of the virus. They are the following. Number one, the students. The National Resistance Movement has promoted education. As a consequence today, there are 10.7 million children in the primary schools two million children in the pre-primary schools, two million students in the secondary schools, 314,000 students in the universities and tertiary institutions. This is a total of almost 15 million young Ugandans distributed in 36,000 primary schools, government and private, 7,000 pre-primary schools, government and private, 5,500 secondary schools, government and private, 49 universities, and 1,543 tertiary institutions, technical schools, teacher training colleges, vocational schools, etc. This is a total of 50,688 points 
50,600 something points with concentrations of 1,000 or more persons each. Uh, so these 15 million Ugandans are gathered in 50,000, uh, or let's say 51,000 to, to make the figure simple, uh, points in the form of schools and colleges and so on. When I visited Masaka SS in Masaka town, it had 4,000 pupils without counting the other non-student people staying in that compound. It is wise that we temporarily remove these concentration points by closing all the primary and secondary schools, pre-primary, as well as all the universities and tertiary institutions for one month, starting with Friday, the 20th of March, 2020, starting at midday. This is what the government has decided, that these 50,000, 51,000 points approximately should close, all of them temporarily, starting at midday on Friday, 20th March. All these institutions, without exception, should close so that we deny this virus those concentrations. The 42 million Ugandans are divided into about 8 million homesteads. Once the education institution's population goes home, they will disperse into these 8 million homesteads that have much less concentrations. If the 15 million were to disperse equally into the 8 million homesteads, each homestead would take one and a half students. So the 15 million, you will not see them once they go home. Because the, the, the homesteads are 8 million, about. So I, I was just simplifying the calculation. If each home was take an equal number, each home will take only one and a half students. Since we cannot have a half student, let us correct to the nearest whole number and we end up with two students per each home state. So you can see the, the strategy. These concentrated these concentration groups, you go home. And when they go home, the concentrations disappear. And uh, if all the homesteads were to receive equal numbers, each one would, would, would get two, 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 two additional people. It is a smart way of avoiding these concentrations in the face of this danger. I've decided to close the, the education institutions even before the occurrence of a single corona incident because I have observed the situation in other countries. Once the epidemic breaks out, there is so much stampede that the first suspect to be affected is the transport. The, the first aspect, the first aspect to be affected is transport. You have seen how airports were clogged with people in the United States. That crowding is perfect ground for new infections. In, in trying to run away, I think people would, would, would get more infections than, than even when people were, were still in one place. Let us therefore move early to avoid the stampede. Number two, once we deal with the concentrations in the education institutions, the next concentration that we must deal with are the religious gatherings, prayers in churches, in mosques, 
open air prayers and services on Fridays, Saturdays, and, Saturday, and, and Sundays. In the interest of our people's health, this should be suspended for a month with immediate effect. Why with immediate effect? Why with, why with immediate effect? The answer is a question of logic. What if a person that is not yet infected today with the virus is infected tomorrow, Thursday, the 19th of March 2020, was to be infected in the last service that had been called to pray for the last time? Because there were, some people said, let's pray for the last time. But the question was, what if somebody gets infected in that prayer for the last time? How will you forgive yourself? And how will God forgive you? Because we don't know who is carrying the virus. When people gather, you don't know what will happen. How would God forgive us and how would we forgive ourselves if we made that mistake by saying let's, let's have one more gathering and in that gathering then somebody who has all, who has all right get, gets infected. When it comes to health, it is better to be a coward and be on the side of caution. If there is no danger after one month, that will be good. There is no problem. If we, if we run away from nothing, there was no danger. That's no problem. If there was danger, we would have then avoided it. So really, logically, the faster we run, the better. The prayers will continue, but in homes. When I was reading the Catechism at Chiamate, 1957, one of the things I learned was that God and I tried to get it translated in English. And they told me that the Wanyankwere were trying to translate the, the fact that God is omnipresent. 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 Omnipotent. Omniscient. Since God is in all places, are you Mianyayona? We can pray at home. Yes, we have been praying together, it has got its advantages, but if it has got a danger, then surely, logically, we cannot insist. The religious leaders can use the television radio stations, the television, uh, television stations, the radio stations, to continue preaching. His Holiness, Pope Francis, as usual, set a good example of enlightenment on this very matter by abandoning his customary preaching in St. Peter's Square and instead using the television. I saw, he, I saw the Pope. The one who took the initiative, please don't come. I don't want anybody to be sick and you say I'm the one who called you. His Holiness, I, I think, is preparing his, his way to heaven very carefully. What if somebody gets infected and you are the one who called him? Without, you can't protect him. You have called him, he has come, he was healthy, he goes back infected. 
and you are the one who called him, you, and, and, and you are a, a, a pope, you are a bishop, you are a, you are a political leader. You know the, this danger around, uh, and you have no capacity to protect the people you call, but you still call them. You don't care what happens to them. I don't think God can, like, can forgive you. I think His Holiness, a very courageous man. Then the next category of mass meetings are the political or cultural public meetings, public rallies, conferences, elections, etc. All these are hereby forbid, forbidden for 32 days with immediate effect. This is category three, public gatherings for politics and for culture. Number four, up to today, the 18th of March 2020, Uganda by the mass of God has been spared by not having even one case confirmed of the coronavirus. There has been many false alarms that our laboratories have proved false. However, there are countries in the world that have had many cases. We describe these cases as category one countries in terms of the epidemic. These countries are Italy, France, South Korea, China, the United States of America, the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Sweden, Belgium, Germany, Spain, Norway, Austria, Malaysia, Pakistan, and San Marino. I don't know what San Marino is, I have never heard of it. With immediate effect, we ban all outbound movement by Ugandans to or through these countries, again for 32 days. We ban any outbound Ugandan going to or through these countries. Foreigners going to those countries are free to do so, provided they do not intend to come back within the prohibited time. We extend our sympathies to those countries and commend them for fighting on behalf of the human race. Number five, we cannot stop Ugandans coming back from abroad even from the category one countries that I read above. However, such Ugandans will be put, put in a mandatory quarantine in a designated place, but they will pay the cost for their institutional quarantine. This cost is for food, for things like that, for their food. If they want to av avoid that inconvenience or cost, they can sit out the storm in the country of their temporary abode and stay there until the, the problem is over. Actually, the, the number of students outside the, the, the children who, who, whom I know, whom we have had to tell to stay there. When someone wanted to come back, we said, no, no, you stay, stay in one place. Because traveling now is, is very dangerous. Six, the next points of mass concentrations are the non-agricultural workplaces, such as factories, hotels, 
large plantations, markets, tax parks, etc. These should continue functioning, but with standard operating procedures, what we call SOPs, put out by the Minister of Health. These can continue operating, but with every giro, with the do's and don'ts put out by the Minister of Health. These do's and don'ts will include compulsory hand washing by all persons who enter or exit those workplaces. Anybody with symptoms of sickness should not be allowed access to, uh, for any, uh, to that place for any reason. The employers should install temperature monitors, etc., etc. They will give the details of those SOPs. The ministry will pub publish the details, SOPs, the detailed do's and don'ts as part of the statutory instrument to be signed by the Minister of Health with immediate effect. Number seven. Then the issue of Uganda-style weddings that bring together a pentagon of groups. Pentagon. Pentagon is a five-sided polygon. That's what I call it, pentagon. Five sides. What are the five, five sides? The clan members of the bridegroom. Those come. Shwera. Uh -huh. The clan members of the bride. Shwerwa. Or Mugore. Now, that's where English becomes a problem. Because in Nyankore, the Mugore was the woman. You could not have a man as a Mugore, but... That's Rinyankore. The, the other language can. So the clan, the clansmen of the of the boy come. The clansmen of the girl come. Then the maternal clans of the two sides, because you cannot bring the father's clan without bringing the the, <laughs> the mother's clan of the two of the two couple of the of the couple come. In Uganda, they call this Obukoja. Obukoja. In Nyankore, they call it Obuiwa. So the, the, the Kojas of the, two, of the two must come. The Kojas of the woman, the koja of the girl, the Kojas of the boy. The school alumni, the ones who studied with, this, with these young people. Uh, and the neighbors and friends. So all this must come. That's why I call it uh, pentagon, two, uh, five sides. M maybe I, when it is six sides, what do you call it? Hexagon, what? He hexagon is how many? Six. Six. Uh -huh. So we shall have to describe the Ugandan style weddings, whether they are hexagonal or pentagonal. These tend to be big gatherings of people coming from the six points of the campus. North, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, they all come. This multidirectional source of the of the embaga attenders, embaga the the, the feast of the feast attenders can be a source of great danger. It is therefore decided that the weddings, weddings of this type should be postponed for 32 days from today. If, however, the couples intending to marry are really in a hurry, they could go for a purely scientific wedding, only involving the core stakeholders 
who are the bridegroom, the bride, the best man, the assistant to the bride, the matron, and the priest, or the chief administrative office. These are less than, as long as the number is less than 10 people. The scientific marriage could then later, at an appropriate time, be followed by the Uganda style one. When things are, are clear. Mama Janet and myself used the scientific one in 1973, and we have not regretted. The coronavirus, in quotes, that time was the Amin regime. That was the coronavirus, which could not allow the Uganda style wedding. Much, much later, with other children and grandchildren, Janet and myself were able to celebrate the 40th anniversary of our marriage, the Ugandan style, with the whole Rakitura compound full of people, with our grandchildren and the bride, as the bridesmaids now this time. So, so we were able to catch up with the, with, with, with the Ugandans. The impatient intending couples could look at this model, the, the scientific model. Eight, the other occasion that gathers a lot of people is a funeral. Again, relatives, friends, mm -hmm. associates, neighbors, etc., turn up in big numbers. Again, with this virus, this is a, a danger point. Many people could be infected there. We cannot ban or postpone barriers for, th for 32 days. It would not be rational. We therefore recommend that the barrier is done by the relatives who are nearby. They should be the ones to kuzika, to bury. Then the money, the kungubaga, the echosi, as they call it in Yankori, could be later when the rituals could be done. This may combine both science and culture. Most importantly, it would be safe for the participants. If the deceased, however, is suspected of dying from the coronavirus, the state will take over and bury the person in the scientific way without the involvement of the family as we did for the Ebola victims. We should not replicate the lack of enlightenment that was exhibited in West Africa where the rituals of washing dead bodies was maintained even when people were dying from Ebola. The consequence was that both the bathers of the dead bodies ended up uh, dying themselves in service of a non-scientific cultural practice. By confronting this disease with enlightened scientific-based actions, we shall defeat it as we did with Ebola three times, with Marburg, and with AIDS. The other big category of Ugandans are the farmers, the crop people, the balimi, the cattle keepers, and the fishermen. These account for about 10 million families according to the 2014 census with a population of 33 million people. So these are the majority of Ugandans.
because they live in scattered homesteads and do not allow much concentration of persons. If they are not pulled by the churches and the mosques or by the politicians for political rallies, they will go about their most useful activities in their dispersed form that is not a danger to themselves or to others. So this majority of the people are not a problem. The, the farmers, the cattle keepers, 10 people in a home, 15 people in a home, 20, the cultivators, these are not a problem. They, they can only be, uh, the problem can, be, can only come from the other groups which tend, which tend to concentrate. So that's why really the groups which concentrate, which concentrate should not uh, only should not cause us a problem when the majority of the people are actually uh, stable. However, they should all observe the hygienic practices recommended on these and subsequent communications. The Technical Committee on Health should, however, study more the issue of the fishermen. Although they fish separately, they live in concentrated landing sites. Landing sites, a miaro. What do we do there? The, 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 the Technical Committee may, may have to study that particular issue. The Technical Committee will evolve the appropriate SOPs for the landing sites of the fishermen. With the other category of farmers, the cattle keepers and the cultivators, the other danger area are the monthly markets. This should also be suspended for the 32 days. Buying of crops and livestock, cattle, goats, chicken, etc. can go on, but from the homesteads. They do not have to congregate in the markets, at least for one month. Just for one month. I am used to this quarantine because when we have carusu, the foot and mouth, they stop us. Like we have been under, caru uh, under quarantine now, I don't know, for, for, for uh, uh, almost a year. But we accept it's better than uh, to, to, be, to be inconvenienced than our cattle dying. This, cattle, this time it's just the cattle. But, but here we are talking about human beings. Mm. Number 10. The next front line with this virus is public transport. The border borders, the taxis, the buses, the minibuses, and the trains. Everybody can see the clear danger here is of many people sitting next to one another in confined space of vehicle from Rila to Kampala, for instance. Therefore, the advice here, this is now an advice, do not travel unless it is absolutely necessary if you are using public transport. If you don't have your own car, don't, don't travel. Stay in your place unless you can't avoid it. Additionally, the companies that operate these means of transport should be given mandatory SOPs, standard operational procedures, by the Minister of Health. Hand washing, not allowing sick people on board, temperature monitors, etc. With these precautions, public transport will continue. However, in the event of an outbreak in a given locality, public transport in that area would be forbidden and the area will be isolated. Eleven, the next front line of fighting the virus is to stop the merrymaking, the discourse, the dances, the bars, the sports, 
the music shows, cinemas, and the concerts. These are very dangerous gathering points with the virus around. Drunkards sit close to one another. They speak with saliva coming out of their mouth. They are a danger to themselves. All these are suspended for a month, for 32 days. Number 12. With these measures taken to deny the virus mass concentration of Ugandans, the next area to look at is hygiene. The virus, according to the facts known so far, spread by Okwesi Amra, the, the other sneezing out, and Okorora coughing out, whereby through your micro mucus every mirror or your spito or strante you pollute the, the air around you and the virus can now enter the nose of the nearby people through breathing that is why it is important that anybody with a cough or cold should not go into public you should self-isolate yourself or be isolated by force if you are not responsible enough to govern yourself for the general good. Even at home, always cough or sneeze into a handkerchief, which you should frequently wash, dry, and iron with a hot, flat iron, or use a disposable tissue which you should then either flush in the toilet or incinerate in a sigiri. My high class people, when we were in one of the meetings, they were saying, no, we should not use handkerchief. We should use a disposable tissue. But, but, but people in Rector have no disposable issue. <laughs> people in Rector have no disposable tissue. So I cannot. Let uh, them use the handkerchief, but wash it regularly and iron and iron it, because when you iron, definitely you kill the virus. Yeah. Me, I always use, uh, keep uh, three, uh, three handkerchiefs. I, I use one, I, I put it away. I, I don't reuse. Yeah. So if I was in a rectora without tissue, uh, I'm sure I, I, could, I could manage. Do not spray the public or your family with your mucus or spiritual through primitively sneezing out or coughing without precautions or blocking your output in the manner suggested. Once the, individu once the individuals control coughing and sneezing, then the next danger point is touching surfaces with infected hands. Tables, door handles, telephone hand handsets, etc. Here the answer is to cough and sneeze into the tissue which you destroy so that your hands are not contaminated. In any case, you regularly wash th these hands. Therefore, your hands do not pollute the surfaces. With money in markets and banks, the Minister of Health would publish SOPs governing that aspect, including disinfecting the coins, using mobile money, using online, online purchases, etc. Once you avoid open coughing and sneezing, and you wash your hands regularly, then you will not contaminate the surfaces, the tables, the door handles, etc. That will protect the public. The virus, even, even if you have it, it will remain with you until you get healed. It is good that for some time now, we have stopped the practice of shaking hands and hugging. 
That one is very good. There is also the side of everybody protecting oneself. As you heard, the virus only enters the body through the soft parts of the body, the mouth, the nose, and the eyes. Even if the surfaces are contaminated with the virus, and you touch those surfaces, yes, the virus will be on your hand. However, it will not enter your body unless you touch yourself in the soft parts of your body before washing. Correct, you people? These soft parts are the eyes, the mouth, and the nose. If you wash with soap, before you touch those soft parts, the virus will have died or will been washed away. Number 13. Then there is the issue of nutrition. So as to eat foods that strengthen our body, our body soldiers, the immune system to fight the enemy. Apart from ensuring a balanced diet, which the district medical officers, through fortunate addresses to all of you, should inform you about, in the particular fight against this virus, there is the need to take in good quantities of vitamin C through eating oranges and lemon, and also eating ripe bananas to get folic acid and vitamin B6. The folic acid and the vitamin B6 help the nervous system of the body. I will ask these people to explain that later in more detail. Ascorbic acid from the oranges helps your body to produce blood cells and build immunity. They will also explain that to you people. Therefore, apart from decongesting the population uh, concentrations, decongesting population concentrations, so as to deny the virus big bodies of our citizens, to easily infect and spread the disease. The other important measure is the one who is having a call not to spray the innocent with sneezing out or coughing into open air. Block your, your sneezing with the tissue. If you, are, if you are the rich type that can afford tissues or in handkerchiefs that you frequently wash, dry, and iron. Wash your hands with soap so that you remove the virus on your hands so that you do not contaminate the surfaces. Then, on the defensive side, make it a habit never to casually touch your mouth, your nose, or your eyes with unwashed hands in case you touch contaminated surfaces. Ever since 1959, at Mbarra High School, when I attended my confirmation course, Octavo Himkono, the Reverend Eustace Ruhindi advised us to use our left hand to receive the bread for the Holy Communion because the right hand would have been contaminated with the greeting of people. It is now 61 years since. In all that time, my right hand is for greeting, opening doors handling pens, etc. The left hand is reserved for myself, blowing my nose, etc. This was long before this disease, Ebola, Corona, etc. It was a wise advice. The Ugandans could look at it. I never allow my right hand to touch my left hand before washing. That is why I never clap hands. They have not seen me clapping hands. Never. In public. I normally bang the table. Because I'm using the, the other hand which I donated to, 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 to the public. I normally bang the tables with the same right hand that I, don I donated to the public long ago. 
I never want my right hand to contaminate my left hand, which is strictly for myself. Otherwise, Uganda is prepared. We have isolation centers. We have long had the testing capacity within the country ever since the first Ebola days. We have some factories providing hand sanitizers, and we are going to have more. Some factories will start producing face masks of the different types. There is even some talk of treatment using the old chloroquine. However, prevention is better than cure. On the side of the economy, there is no doubt that some sectors like tourism, hotels, sports, entertainment, etc., will be hit by the phenomenon of this disease. However, others, like the manufacturing sector, will get a boost. The countries of the world, by their selfish actions, are again waking up Africa that it is suicidal to depend on others. I have warned our people to stop talking like the selfish foreigners by trying to stop the ritual we have being exported to other African countries. We can keep a bit for ourselves, but we shall share with the others whatever we have. The blocking of imports should therefore get the long sleeping Ugandans to wake up and use the huge amount of money they long earned by turning our market into a dumping point for foreign goods to build our own manufacturing capacity. Through the Bubu Buy Uganda Build Uganda, we shall help those groups. Everything you have been importing, except for petroleum products for now, now make here. The US dollar seven billion you have been using to import, keep it here. Turn misfortune into an opportunity. On Saturday, 21st March, which will be the 41st anniversary of the defeat of Idi Amin's forces at Rugando by the Tanzanian Defense, the Tanzanian People's Defense Force of 8 KJ, 8 KJ, 8, 8, 8, 8 Battalion and Task Force Battalion and Fronasa forces. I have invited the top leaders of the faith for national prayers at Entebbe State House. I will invite only a few, the heads. I don't want a, a crowd. I will invite a few, they come and we, we pray for the whole country. The few of us will pray for the whole country together. All of you pray in your homes. God will hear us. In order to synchronize the dates with the closure of the schools on Friday, the actions of suspending the other activities that are starting immediately will run for 32 days, not 30 days. I thank you, and I wish you good luck.